team, this is the last video log of my fourth semester as a PDF, and it's sad. I'm going to be sad to not be a PDF anymore, um, but I guess it's a lifelong thing. <laughs> It'll just be sad not to be with the group anymore and to have the opportunity every Monday night to see shining faces talking about changing lives. This video log is about reflections on the semester and the best and worst moments. Um, I thought about it before I started the video log and for sure the best and worst moments were in the middle of the semester when we just had a complete breakdown as a group and uh, there were teams and sides and people were divided and people were feeling things that they'd never felt before and um, it was really, really, really hard and there were a lot of tears, but I'm, I know that it was important. We've all talked about how incredible it was for our group to almost, you know, rediscover oppression within our own lives and within our group, um, and it, it was great, but it was also really hard. So overall, I think those are probably best and worst moments. For me personally, best and worst moments are... A little different. Um, best. I was really excited to be able to do a dialogue on rape culture. Um, it was hard. Again, best and worst. It was really hard. And for sure the, the worst were the first and the last because they stirred up the most emotion. The first one was so hard because it was my first time and I was terrified walking in. I was shaking and I didn't know what to expect and I was overwhelmed and I didn't know how to control how I was feeling and I didn't know how to find the right support and I hadn't prepared myself at all. And then the last because at that point I'd had such... <laughs> at the beginning I'd had really high hopes and expectations for the dialogue, a lot of which were let down. Um, and then to a point I just got really detached and it was a dialogue, it was a job, it was a sheet to read off of, it was something to teach but not to live. That I don't like that. It was something to just come and do. It wasn't really to experience it new every time and it it wasn't I didn't feel like I was getting anything out of it this semester. Uh, and then by the time the last one came around, I walk into each dialogue with the new hope that it's gonna be incredible and that these people are going to change my life and I'm going to change theirs and it's going to be worth it. And the last dialogue started off really rough and by the middle when Andy and I recapped, um, just kind of like met with each other and figured out how the rest of the dialogue was going to go, we were, he was on and on about DGAF, don't give a fuck, because it was really, really awful. Um, and then someone felt secure enough and safe enough in the space to share about her traumatic experience with rape and it was just really awful because nobody gave a fuck. Nobody even cared and it didn't make a difference and um, I didn't know how to deal with it and I just completely broke down all over again and I'm really glad Andy was there because I needed somebody. <laughs> um, and I'm feeling lucky that I got to facilitate with Andy and Megan. Um, I was really excited to facilitate with Naya, and I was upset when she didn't get to be there, and it changed my dialogues a lot. Um, but in retrospect, I could not have handled the rape dialogue without Andy. I don't think Naya and I would have been able to do it with each other because it would have just been too raw and too real, and we wouldn't have been able to support each other because we would both need support. And also, just with personality types and with what the dialogue space needed, my facilitation style needs someone like Andy. And it brought... My identity in that space brought a reverence and a respect and a tone that was very heavy. And Andy's brought a fun and... Everybody can identify and everybody can feel comfortable and, um, you know, don't bullshit, don't say what we want to hear. This is just a place to talk kind of feeling. So we made a really great team. Um, 
Megan and I, uh, she's one of the best people I've ever met. However, um, we are a lot alike and our facilitation style is a lot alike and we didn't even realize how detrimental it was to the dialogues we were leading until Lisa got a chance to got a chance to <clears throat> observe at the very end. So um just some reflections I guess. I think a worse or a a worse moment or a low of my semester unfortunately is just feeling extremely um detached from the process of the research and detached from the group because of it because I wasn't observed uh, except for the last one which Lisa just did out of the goodness of her heart because I asked her to. She had no time to do it and it didn't benefit her, benefit her at, all, at all. But it was really hard for me to get no feedback during the semester to not you know, hear what I can work on and what I am doing well and to have those opportunities to meet with her and process and really find out, you know, like what, where I am in my, in my facilitation process. And it was so hard not to have that. I was really disappointed and kind of upset, kind of pissed that I didn't get the same that everybody else did. A little bit honored that it feels like, you know, I can be trusted with a dialogue and I have to be observed, but also, I was facilitating with two grads, so maybe they were keeping me in line. But um, I also just, I feel like I missed out on a really deep co-facilitator bond. Yeah, don't get me wrong, I have really incredible relationships with Andy and Megan, but it's different with the power dynamic that we have and the fact that they're, that Andy's a facilitator in our class and that I work in res life with them and they're my bosses, essentially, and... There were just a lot of boundaries that were that we stayed away from, and it definitely hindered that relationship of getting to build with my co-facilitators. And also, it took away from my ability to process in class. Um, we processed outside of class after the dialogues every time, but I didn't get to have that like group processing because one, I didn't feel like I should even bother to talk because I wasn't part of the research really. Um, and it was a lot more beneficial for Lisa to hear from everybody else. But also I had this, this mentoring idea, idea that I shouldn't speak because I've already done this once and they need their chance to do it. So I was struggling with a lot of things this semester and I meant to meet with Lisa a lot earlier than I ended up meeting with her, but I can definitely put some of the blame on me in that I didn't meet with her and I didn't say what was bothering me at the beginning, but I didn't really realize until midway through that I was really disappointed with the semester, and I felt like I didn't get nearly as much out of it as I did my my la you know, last year. But I do think that maybe I'm just not thinking about it in the right way because I got different things out of it. And I really, I've loved the group that I've gotten to work with, and I've learned so much from them, and I've built really, really incredible relationships with the people in our group now. Um... So I did get I did I got plenty of things out of being a PDF and I'm happy and I'm I would never take it away I, I don't regret my decision to stay as a PDF for a second but I was disappointed with the semester and what it could have been for me um, but I'll end on a high with best moments um, I really love each and every one of them and I like that this group challenges me a lot more than the last group did. I think it could a lot of it is my processing and where I am in my life and what I'm looking at and where I'm going. But um, the identities that this group brings to the room and the personalities and the things that they're willing to call out and that they, that they want to talk about have really, really challenged me and changed me in so many ways. And I have loved every second of it, um, inside and outside of class. And I also like that we've gotten to work more closely with Lisa because I adore her and I know that I would not be the person that I am today without her at all. I would I would be a much lesser person without Lisa Evinger. And so I've really enjoyed getting to have her in the class and really like get that facilitating side from her because she brings a totally different perspective to the group. Um, I've loved Becky and Rachel dearly, as I always have. Uh, and... 
there's there's nothing I can say to really fully explain what being a PDF has meant to me and what it has done for me. Um, looking back on it, it's one of the best decisions that I've ever made, and I wouldn't give it up for anything. So thank you for the opportunity and for everything that you've taught me and everything that you've given me. There's no way I could ever give it back, but I will try. <laughs>